Jamie, we're going to touch on another interesting uh, topic that sometimes can be mindless, which is big data. So give us some insights from your time at South by Southwest uh, of what you saw. How many of us here are familiar with the term big data, by the way? OK, good, good. See, I'm checking for language, making sure I'm using good <laughs> language. Go ahead, Jamie. How many went to South by Southwest this year? So I was lucky enough um, to be in the audience at the PayPal lounge when Guy uh, Kawasaki was interviewing uh, Steve Esterbrook, who is the global brand officer for McDonald's. And I was sitting there, and the conversation was around customer centricity. And Guy was asking Steve, with all this information you're collecting, what are you doing? How are you changing your business? And he sat back, and I appreciated his honesty, and he said, I can tell you in China how many French fries orders we've had in the last hour. I can tell you how many Big Macs were ordered in Brazil in the last month, and I can tell you the average time it takes uh, for a drive through order to be um, fulfilled. And he said, I don't know who my customer is. Can you imagine? All this information, and they're not collecting the right information. And he admitted it. He basically said, we've got this, but we're not acting upon it, and we're not collecting the right information. Um, in Lisa's book, um, near the end of the book, I love the example that she brought up, and it was Chris Brogan. And he was checking into a hotel in Boston. It was the Colonnade. And he was going to a Black Keys concert. The manager got wind of this, brought up a CD of Black Keys, and I'm sure gave him a ride to the concert as well. And he just sat there and he said, gosh, all this information we're collecting, everything that we get online, but what we should be doing is collecting the right information so we can serve our customers better. That's what we should do. And that really hit home, and Lisa mentions this in her book, and she talks about warm data. That's what we need. We need to, again, how do we serve our customers better? So I, I really like that. And then the other, uh, which um, Lisa touches in her book too, is dark social. So we're all tracking our leads. We know the importance of, um, you know, of the different sources, but we can't track it all effectively, and it doesn't give you all the answers by far. But social media, just to give you an idea for us, uh, we, our goal every month is to have 40,000 leads, and we usually have about 45,000 leads. Wow. Of those 40,000? 45,000. 45, our goal 000. is 40, but we've been hitting 45. I'm sure that's going to drop now that season's over. But, with that, 15% um, of our leads are directly attributed to social media, what I can, what I can actually tell, um, and 5% of our leases and sales. I don't know if you've seen L2 Think Tech's information. They're a great organization. They follow retail, hotels, automobile uh, industries, and they came back and said that retail is showing about 2% of their sales are from social. I think it's highly underestimated. And if, you, again, you look at dark social, I mean, you can't always attribute it. So if you see these long links that are coming to your website, that's probably a social share. And then you think about the revolution of customers that don't want you to track them, including using Snapchat and, and other services like that. And so, WhatsApp also, right? Yeah. You so can, it's, You can kind of slip under the radar with WhatsApp or Snapchat. Yeah. So your data isn't being tracked. It's not being tracked, and again, maybe uh, you know, to your point, it's uh, you know we're really um, not taking the insights that we need from the information that we're getting. But I think the biggest point for me again was the warm data. It's really collecting the right information and using it to serve our customers better. Right. And remember that Gartner Group j recently said that big data has reached its peak of inflate, overinflated expectations. <laughs> so Gartner Group may not be the ultimate resource or always right, but I must give them credit because um, they don't really predict that big data is going to hit its pinnacle for another five to 10 years, where we can really say it has delivered on all of their, its promises. Um, there are some initial studies that, I, uh, that say that data-driven companies are generally 6% more profitable than non-data-driven companies. So if you are only making decisions 
based on the smartest woman or the smartest man in the room, you certainly are missing out on opportunities. Um, but my, my job, again, is to make sure, has, are we swinging the pendulum too far to big data and missing out on the warm data opportunities that you mm -hmm. talk about? Mm -hmm.